I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Liv Houston's with us. How are Hi. you? Nice I'm to meet you. You too. Got a lot going on these days. Pretty busy. Yeah, I guess. Let it snow, bombshell. Mm -hmm. How's life going right now? I'm I'm enjoying it. Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's kind of, it's like the the bit now where we get to talk about how much fun it was to make and then people get to see it. So like this is this is the fun bit. It's like the anticipation's about to kick in. Yeah, totally. How long was Let It Snow? How long was that shoot? Uh, it was a couple of months. It was like over February and March this year uh, in Toronto. Nice. Well, we were just talking all about weather off camera. Oh yeah. <laughs> so at least you hit Toronto before the winter. Absolutely. Well, no, it was it was, was like it dead, cold? dead winter. We were using all of the real snow. Oh wow. Yeah, all the stuff that you see where we're outside in the snow. We're really outside in the snow. I gotcha. Yeah. Had you filmed in Toronto before? No, I hadn't. I what? filmed in Vancouver, but not Toronto. What did you think of the city? I loved it. It's a good spot, right? Yeah, it was beautiful. Yeah, definitely underrated. People just kind of think about the weather itself. I, but I loved the weather. I mean, I'm Australian, so before shooting that film, I had seen snow maybe like four times. So the novelty never wore off right. on me. Some of the some of the others were like, "Oh, it's freezing." I'm like, "This is magic! <laughs> There's ice coming out of the sky." <laughs> we get to use real snow here. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you learn about yourself as an actor from that project? Um, oh man, I. You know, it was it was a really fun opportunity to work in an ensemble cast of people around my age, and I hadn't gotten to do that since working in theatre when I was a bit younger in Australia. So it was nice to sort of come back to that environment as someone who's now a bit more experienced mm -hmm. and like get to play with people in my age bracket again. Yeah, because you're used to just having people 10, 15, 20 years older than you at times. And Sometimes, it's like yeah. it's nice to just be comfortable with like the same cultural references that people kind of yeah. get, you know? And I, I didn't go to college. Mm -hmm. um, and I was joking with um, Miles, a castmate of mine, last night that all, all of us were staying in the same hotel and like working on the same project mm -hmm. for like a couple of months. So it was like a sort of university yeah, camp it was like, like a semester environment. Type of deal. Yeah. yeah, so that was a cool experience to have. Do you feel like you missed out by not doing college because you just kind of got it going with the career pretty early? You know, I I didn't. I felt very strongly that I didn't want to go mm -hmm. pretty early on, so it, I never felt like I missed out. I, I just felt like w what I was doing was different. Um, so there are, there are some experiences that like I, I haven't had, but then I had in different ways, mm -hmm. like um, traveling or working or like or the classic coming of age stuff. But I was just doing it in a slightly different environment. Totally. When did you realize that acting was going to be your path? You know, um, w when I was nine. I was, I was in my first school play when I was nine. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do this forever. And hopefully someone will pay me one day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, here I am. I'm doing yeah, it Yeah, it used to annoy my teachers a fair bit because I never had a backup plan ever. I was right. like, no, I'm going to do this and it, it will work, I suppose. Mm. And a lot of my teachers were like, okay, but like... They're like, what else what are you else? interested I'm in? I'm like, no, that's it. You're like, no, I'm good. I'll I'm fine. <laughs> So it was one of those things where I was like, well, I, I hope it works out because I don't have any other ideas. Did you want to stay in Australia or did you always want to come here? You know, it's funny. I always thought I would end up in England. Really? Yeah. Why is that? I, I have, um, my, both my parents were born in England. Mm. So I, I have a British passport. And I, was, I started in theatre and I just always sort of assumed that I would like keep doing theatre and maybe move to England and do that there. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up doing screen acting in America, so it's just completely different. Would you consider doing some stuff in England? Yeah, I mean, point? I'm very greedy. I would like to do anything <laughs> Whatever anywhere. it takes, it's yeah. Completely. Whatever country. Oh, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to tick them all off, please. <laughs> well, you've been all around the world at this point, so how has that global experience kind of created the person you are today? It's, I f really do feel as though I'm getting away with something, hmm. because well, like the the, what do you think? The what are you getting away with? <laughs> the two things I'm interested in doing are acting and traveling, and then I get I get I get to travel for my job. Yeah. And so it's constantly like I shouldn't be. I shouldn't <laughs> this is allowed real, to right? do this. Like someone's going to be like, all right, that's enough. Listen, right. just p <laughs> pick one. All right, that's this is silly. Where are some of the best spots you visited, whether it's for work or just for pleasure? Um, I filmed a show in South Korea in 2015, oh, wow. and I loved spending time there. Good food. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I miss it. That's cool. So how old were you when you came to California? For the first time, I was 19. Mm. I was 19. And then when I started working here, I was 20. Gotcha. So yeah. what was that transition like for you? Um, it was, it kind of happened without me paying attention. Like I came over here for the first time on an acting workshop and then I, I signed with a manager here. And then I, I would come back here whenever I needed to for work, whether I was like testing for a role mm. or like coming out and auditioning for some stuff. And then as I, as I started working more, 
the time I was spending in America just got longer and longer and longer. So I sort I moved here by accident a little bit. I sort of looked up one day and was like, oh, I've been here for months. Well, like, I, I should probably just hang out yeah, here. Oh, I, yeah, oh, I live here now, I think. So you've done a ton of stuff so far. What were some of the first couple parts that you're getting that you're like, this is pretty cool, or like, I'm really starting to build this thing out here? Yeah, I, I just, I don't know that I think about it in those terms, but I'm, I'm just so excited to do different things each time. One of the things that I love the most about my job is um, the versatility it allows me to experience mm -hmm. and like different roles I get to play and different genres I get to muck around in. So with every new thing, I'm like, oh, this is gonna be cool, this is different, this is exciting. Yeah, I mean, Bombshell certainly falls into that category. Yes. <laughs> Not only with the people that you're working with, but just the actual material that you guys are diving into. Totally. So when you think about that experience now, what are the big flashbulb moments for you that you think about? That was mental. Um, we shot that film in LA in, uh, for a couple of months around November um, 2018. And I, I didn't know much about the story that it's based on mm -hmm. before we started shooting. So it was a lot of like learning as we went. Obviously it's an insane group of people to yeah. be working with. So I, I learned a huge amount um, watching them work and watching them play with the material. And I, I turned 23 on set. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> what was the birthday celebration? Um, Jay, the director, got me a cake, and uh, Charlize gave me a hug. <laughs> it <was laughs> and great. it's like, all right, let's go right back to I was like, cool, this. I don't know. <laughs> what else am I going to do? Like, this is fine. This is good. <laughs> like, all right, should we go back to making this movie about a very sad and horrible mm, thing? Good, yeah. let's do let's, that. Uh, let's just turn off all the jubilation. <laughs> and we're done. <laughs> Well, you play Megyn Kelly's assistant. Mm -hmm. Charlize in the trailer looks, you know, uncanny the way that she is able to pull that off. So what are the best parts of that experience? Like, what do you notice from her compared to other actors you've worked with before? She, like, brings such a focused, determined energy to set. Um, and, and she's so cool and, like, carries herself with such power and, and intent. And you just, she brings everybody along with her. Like, you just want to match that energy and, and meet her there. And um, and she was also an executive producer on mm. the film, so she would like finish her scenes, take off all of her Megyn Kelly prosthetics, and then sit at Video Village with headphones on and like talk with Jay and Charles about making the film. So it was this real atmosphere of like everyone being super hands on deck, um, and that was a beautiful environment to be in. Totally. Yeah. And even with this material, like we had the loudest voice in the room on Showtime, which mm -hmm. is all about Roger Ailes and what was going on at Fox. Like clearly, this is an important issue. We want to yeah. talk about it. What do you think are some of the big messages to take away from this story and this movie in general? Um, it's a lot about like uh, the the um, American landscape of political culture and how mm -hmm. we talk about politics, and then how we talk about power, and then how those dynamics of of like power and aggression, especially in politics and within the workforce, it's it's like a miasma of things that are very important culturally right now. So I think that's why the story has resonated with a lot of people. Yeah, I think power in particular is one to really unpack because yeah. I don't think enough people understand when somebody's a superior to you and they try and leverage that situation sexually, yeah. how much of a victim you can be in that situation. And through the stories of the women at Fox, like we've really found out how messed up some things were. It's incredibly disempowering. Um, and it's you know something that we're still learning how to talk about mm -hmm. as a society. Um, and it's you know exciting to, and difficult, um, but like a healthy kind of difficult, I think, to be able to dive into that as much as possible. Yeah, and we're not far removed from it, too. No. I mean, it's not like we're five, 10 years out of it. Like, this all just happened within no. the last few years. The film is set over 2015 and 2016. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because that feels like last week and also 100 years ago at yeah. the same time. Given so much has happened, and yet yes. it doesn't feel like that long ago in some other senses. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. So I've seen some other stuff you've done. I saw that movie Puzzle you did. Oh, cool. Yeah, which uh, David Denman was here a couple years back. Oh, and, like, beautiful. Yeah, and that was like a really sweet movie. You know, Thank like you. there was a lot going on there. What was it like doing something a little bit different, more on the independent side? Um, that was, we shot that in New York, mm -hmm. and it was my first time in New York. Oh, wow, cool. Yeah, um, so it was great for me, and I've been a massive fan of Kelly's for a long time. Uh, and it was just like a, a beautiful, like very tender, sweet film. I liked my character a lot. Um, I was in New York City for the first time. It was spring. Not it was just idea. like, this is good. <laughs> this is very nice. Thank you. Yeah, and it goes to show, like, you kind of have to get out of your comfort zone a little bit because if things become too stale at home, mm -hmm. you can get boxed in, and then you start looking around, trying to do some other things. I'm, like, naturally a very restless person. Mm. If, if I sit still for, like, maybe five minutes, right. I think is, like, the threshold at which I start <laughs> losing my mind. 
I like that. Well, thank you. <laughs> Cause sure, problems sometimes. Sure, it can probably irritate some people at other times, but my wife is the same way, super adventurous, like wants to keep it going. So totally. I'm just like, all right, we're going to do this. I yeah. got gotcha. you. So uh, you did Santa Clara Diet as mm -hmm. well. What was the coolest part of that experience? I mean, that was just, that was huge. I, that was my first job like on American soil. Like mm -hmm. I'd been in American productions that like had shot in Canada or in other parts of the world, but it was my first job in the States. Um, so it was kind of what brought me over here on a permanent basis. And like oh, the writing was so funny. Um, it gave me and everyone else so much to work with. Everyone really liked each other. Yeah. Uh, and it was like a very unique show to get to work on. It's like, yeah, we're gonna, you're allowed to swear a lot. Right. And like, and your character's very snarky and fun. And like, also you get to play with like fake corpse parts <laughs> at work every totally day. Totally different experience. Yeah, right. it was a real treat. Um, and I just, I learned so much on the production side. It's like, here's what it's like to work on a series for a number of years mm -hmm. and come back to this character over and over again. And here's what that feels like. And so that was really important for me to learn. Yeah, it's not just a one-off experience. Like you have the runway to really grow this thing out and, yeah. and try some different things too. Whereas like in a movie, you really just have to be in that part yes. for that one time. Lock it in. Yep, yeah. And let's make sure we get it done. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who are some other people that have inspired you along the way? Whether it's you as a kid growing up, people you've worked with so far, like who are people you like? Oh man, I mean, um, Drew obviously mm -hmm. has been like a, a massive source of inspiration for me, um, but both like before I met her and worked with her mm -hmm. and, and during and now after. Um, I was I was always like, I always looked up to Kate Blanchett a lot and mm -hmm. still do. Um, and it's it was funny working on Bombshell because like that kind of hit like a bunch of people oh, yeah, who I've admired for, sure. for a very long time. And then it was kind of a running joke where it's like, how many Australian actors can we fit <laughs> in this film? I think there's like five of us. Are there really? Because yeah. it's you, Nicole. There's Kader. me, Nicole, Margot, the Lawson brothers. Right. I, I I don't know if I'm forgetting someone, but it's minimum five. <laughs> it's a fair bit. I like that. Yeah. What is the biggest misconception about Australian actors? About Australian actors. You, we could put it to Australia in general. Oh man. Um, Australian culture. The biggest misconception about Australia is that it's hot all the time. Mm. Well, um, that's what I was asking you before yeah, we got going. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because like it, it is, but it really depends on where you are. What I like to, I think is a fun fact to tell people, but it also puts it into perspective, is that the United States and Australia are about the same land mass mm -hmm. size. So there's like a similar amount of um, like climate diversity going on. But then like the population of Australia is 24 million people and the population of the United States is 310 mm. million people. <laughs> like that's the major difference, I think. You're somebody that seems like you have a bunch of different interests, like even just what you're saying right now. What you were telling me about the Pacific Ocean being wider than the moon. Like, Found that out recently. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely something I didn't know. So what are some other things you like to do when you're not working? I just love compiling weird facts. Mm. <laughs> that's that's how, that's really a hobby of mine. That's how your brain works? Yeah, yeah, I like knowing stuff. Um, I, I like to read. Um, uh, as much as I can, like to read for fun and also to remind me to get off my phone. <laughs> mm, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. and uh, whenever I can, I like to travel. Nice. Yeah. You, you read anything good lately? Yeah, I'm reading an amazing book of essays at the moment called Trick Mirror by Gia Talento, mm. which is fantastic. And then are you watching anything good these days? I just finished watching um, the first part of the last season of BoJack Horseman. And oh, nice. Loved it. It's yeah. one of my favorite shows. Good deal. Yeah. All right, Liv, really nice to meet you. You too. Thanks so much. Thanks. Check out Liv and all our great stuff. When are the, when are the big dates? Why don't you share those? Uh, let bit? us know comes out November 8th, and Bombshell comes out in December, but I don't think we have a date yet. All right, cool. There you go. That's Liv. I'm DJ. See you next time. All right, let's sit down.